Jason DeFalco, Superintendent, and uh, welcome to our December Facebook live stream. This month, we are showcasing and highlighting our middle school. And so I'd like to introduce or reintroduce to everybody uh, our principal of the middle school, uh, Ms. Kurt. And Ms. Kurt's going to share with us tonight uh, just a, a bit about the great work that she and the team are doing at our middle school to help really create a program that meets the needs of all children and really helps to accelerate the achievement and the social emotional health of our students. And so uh, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Kurt. Thank you. Um, so I, what I did is try to compact as much as I can get into the time we have with you tonight into the four buckets that we've always been talking about with our school improvement plan, with the district plan of the what, the how, the whole child, and the community. Um, and so the first piece would be with the what, and this um, is what we're doing with our professional learning community. So a professional learning community is the time that teachers have to meet and work together in how they can improve instruction for the best outcomes for all our students. So starting last year, we did a lot of work with looking at beginning, middle, and end of year data for STAR, as well as how did the students do on the MCAS individually, as well as what standards, and we could still continue that work this year. Um, and then this something we did with instructional um, reports with STAR is each student gives, we get a whole instructional port, report of what their strengths and weaknesses are and where we can work to help um, their instruction in ELA and in math. So for the STAR, that's mainly for the ELA and math teachers, whereas for MCAS, we also look at the science. And the, this year, we really delved into on the school profile page with the Department of Ed had exactly where um, we fell short of the state average. And so we are looking at those specific standards to say, how do we need to increase that in the curriculum that we already have? Um, something that is new for ELA this year, but, um, and we didn't have it last year for math, but the math department had had it for a while, was the use of a website called iXL. So iXL allows the teachers to give whole class practice on the standards as well as individual ones. And the teachers have just really learned how to use that very well and more on how to do it individually than the whole class through some professional development webinars that we've had. Um, and the teachers are liking it so much that we're actually trialing this for Spanish, science, and history. So That's parents great. may see the students using it for all five of those subject areas. So you're finding, just quickly on that, you're finding this to be a helpful, like an intervention tool or? For both. So the okay. teachers are using it to push out new standards and new things that they're working on with all the students, as well as when the students need some help, they can go back to the specific oh, and standards re and reteach and, and relearn some of the work. Um, and then something that we, the teachers are still very excited to be using are the one-to-one -one devices. So Yeah, say more about that. Um, so it has really increased with the Google Classroom, even with the iXL. So you'll see some of these programs, um, but the teachers are using that all through the Google Classroom. So Google Classroom is really a, an online classroom where when they give assignments, instead of just handing it out to them or saying, go this place in the textbook, they can put in hyperlinks that will take them directly to websites or they put the actual work right there into the um, assignment. And then they also can make it so that if it's a written piece or something or a project that the students are going to work on, even if it's as a group work, they can assign it they have a, a template, if they, ha if they have a graphic organizer or a template to use, then it will make a copy and then the students turn it in. Um, One of the things to just to highlight that I love when we visit your classrooms is when students are collaborating on like kind of on their device with a, you know, a common shared document or something, giving each other feedback. So it's really neat to see the tool being used to, to also, you know, not just for learning, but also to increase communication and collaboration right. across students. I think that's really different. Our, then in wellness, <laughs> the students are actually working. Mrs. Blanchard is having students do um, a project about sun, sun safety, um, but instead of working with each other, she's actually gonna have them share with another grade and they're gonna communicate through the devices because they don't have class at the same time. We haven't seen the sun in about six months. So is that, <laughs> <laughs> is that me? I don't know if it's timely for that unit, but that's okay. Well, it's important. Yeah, as it as is. Mrs. Blanchard would say, you need uh, 
a, like an ounce <clears throat> of sunscreen, not just a little That's bit, right. to, to um, be protected. The sun will return someday. So, yeah. but one of the most important pieces with Google Classroom is if parents didn't understand or don't know, is that you can request to get notifications. So you, the teacher can have your email there. So when something is posted or homework is posted, it will send a notification to your phone um, about the assignment. You can actually log into the classroom and see that due to student privacy concerns, mm -hmm. but you can be notified every time something is posted out into the classroom. So if you if you're not sure you're under, uh, you know how to do that, you certainly could email any of the teachers or myself, and we can make sure you know how to do that. And anybody that is uh, tuning in and viewing, by all means, send your questions in as we mm -hmm. go, and we can uh, we can answer them as we keep moving along here. Um, so that's really uh, the bigger piece right now that we've been working on with curriculum. The next thing that we're going to move with curriculum is during our professional learning community time, otherwise known as PLC time, is looking at student work protocols. So looking at authentic student work that they've done in the classroom, not IXL or any of these online prog programs, but the work that they've done that the teacher has asked them to do. And how would it be graded? Where's the strengths? Where are the weaknesses? Where do the students need help? And working together. Um, with their subject department and grade level teams on where best to move that student forward based on the assignment that they just did. So, Can, can you just share a little bit uh, for our families about how, just how critical that time is for, you know, for the teachers to get together to look at that work? I mean, what's the overall impact for, on kids? What's, you know, what's the kind of the, the uh, driver there? So, I mean, I can speak from experience as a teacher. Yeah. I, I didn't get that time unless I made that time before school or after school. Mm -hmm. So to get that time during the school day to talk with others um, and learn from each other, because we don't have to keep always going outside to find best practices. Everybody's doing them in classes every day. We just need time to share those. And that's, that's for the benefit of all the students. Great. Um, the next piece that we have is the how. So the how really started last fall when Focus Schools came and started to work with us. And what we did was in, in not just middle school, but in all of the district schools is creating an instructional leadership team. So from that, our what we did is learn really what is an instructional leadership team? How does that help drive looking at student work, looking at the data that we have? Where does the school need to go? and what is the instructional focus. So our instructional leadership team is administration, myself, Dr. Laporte, our instructional coach, Mr. Karen, uh, ELA teacher, math teacher, and our physical education teacher. And so we meet on a bi-monthly basis for an entire period in making decisions on how to move that forward. And that whole team this year has actually been the one that's been doing all of the planning for our faculty meetings, curriculum meetings, and our PD day. Uh, our instructional focus so that that helps all students. Um, so our instructional focus, the adult speak, is all students will show growth in their problem solving skills through increased motivation, resiliency, and perseverance. Um, and then obviously students wouldn't really understand <laughs> what that means, um, but what we're looking to is how, this one. <laughs> how are they trying to, how are we going to help their critical thinking skills so that when a problem gets too difficult, they're going to persevere through it and actually be able to make a decision and, and move forward, um, especially when it comes to lengthier project or mm -hmm. writing pieces. Um, and so what, what we had done is we then had a student contest. The teachers came up with different student-friendly ways of saying it. The students then had all the, uh, you know, a good amount of choices to choose from and then they did a vote and so the student friendly focus as you can see on our marquee every morning it's been there is chargers come fully charged uh, mrs tasker is loving that with saying for the chromebooks to come <laughs> to school go. charged every day um, but we're really just trying to say to give the students the skills and the critical thinking that they need so that they're ready to go every day and can solve whatever issue comes their way. I, just two questions on that. So I love the concept, right, of getting kind of all of the adults organized around one particular area of focus. Um, and the kids being obviously uh, plugged into that's huge, right? That's like really important. So I love that the kids came up with their own uh, way of saying that in a way that makes sense to them. I'm kind of wondering two things. One, 
just could you touch just very briefly on how the staff like how did you get them together to kind of come up with that because you've got about 40 ish right um, educators right. in the in the middle school so how did you do that and the second question is so <clears throat> they're in the middle school they spend their three years they go to high school then what like what is there an alignment between the middle school and high school with their instructional focus has there been any cross conversations between you and the high school because last month we heard from principal Duda who got kind of deep into what's going on at the high school level i'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about i thought you were going to say you talk we talk all the time yeah. i thought maybe he said that <laughs> um so really what we had seen in the in the middle school was more of social emotional needs of the students and how to keep them motivated how to get them excited mm, about the, the learning stage. yeah yeah and persevering and really pushing through those more rigorous and um assignments where they need to put more of their writing down um and so we the, that's what the teachers were looking for and then we also said for problem solving but then how could it be critical thinking and that's that's really the high school's focus as well is um the critical thinking skills with problem solving um we're doing, I mean, that's going to be in like 10 seconds, I'll tell you what our fo first instructional focus is, but that it's something that the school had done previously uh, quite a few years before I had came, and it's just getting more of the teachers on board and making it really embedded in the practice. And then the second one we want to work on is one that the high school's already doing with annotation and learning from them. How did they roll that out? How did they, how, what was working for them? What was not? working for them so that we could learn from them instead of just going through the process ourselves. So what I'm hearing is there's some direct alignment 612 mm -hmm. through the two buildings? Yes. Yeah. And then um, the students also had another piece in it. So we actually did an art contest for the logo. And then we're just waiting for um, an actual graphic designer to give us the final product. Nice. So we had a voting in October of the, the top And the kids voting. were all involved in that? Yes. That's yeah. awesome. They, they voted for the pumpkin carving contest yeah, 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 and yeah. that, that at the great. same time. We just fed them through the line during the lunches. That's, those were amazing. Yeah. So if you go, um, so the next thing is the first evidence-based um, teaching practice. And this is what we had before. So it's um, ACE, answer, support, and explain. Um, some people may have saw it as ASE and ACE. Um, so that was one thing that we did want to fix in the district in the school was to all use the same acronym and find one that works for all, including the math department. So all it really means is that the students were making sure that they're actually answering the question for what the question's asking um, and really looking at the question words. Is it asking you to compare? Is it asking for a contrast? Is it asking for you to make an inference? Um, and then the next one is to support with specific evidence. So as a former ELA teacher for, you know, for in English, this is a little bit more based in English, but it doesn't matter to us if it's something that's paraphrased or direct quote that can be talked about with an English teacher. Whereas the rest of the school community is really saying, well, how can you support with evidence in math that's showing mm -hmm. your work um, in, per, in physical education? How can I support with specific evidence, but maybe it's my verbal communication skills. It's not always written skills. Um, and so the explain is then explaining why, the why behind, behind your answer. So this is really to help students to focus more on their writing. Um, we have already, as you can see in the, on the slide that's up, we have that poster is in every single classroom. We have it in the media center um, and the teachers are referring to that. Um, and it was great that the print shop from the high school made them for yeah. us. So. so what? Just a question on this. So so kids only do this in English? No, it's in every single class. So they have to do it in every class. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, is the expectation that as a school you're all kind of uh, adopting this mindset and helping kids to really think through? This, right. So like, as you so might see, process. that it's kind of has the poster has writing utensils on there. Um, for example, for math, they're using it for show your work. But when yeah. it was taking a test. Make sure you have your answer. Make sure you're showing your work. Make sure you're explaining if you have to explain if one of the questions is asking that. Um, in Spanish, you know, it's really hard for them to do something like that. In Spanish, they don't know enough of it. So, you know, Mrs. Rydell is saying, okay, when you finished your test, she's always been, the student's been reflective. So how do you think you did? Why? What mm -hmm. evidence gives support for 
why you think you should do, have done a certain way when you're for a particular test. And um, in physical education, you know, it's more verbal. Mm-hmm. So why are you know, why are you wanting to or choosing to do that as opposed to this other? Why is this the better one? And giving reasoning, but it's more verbal than it is written. And, you, and uh, your, phys- your phys ed teacher is on your instructional leadership. Yes. Right? That's really unique. That's a really awesome thing that he's part of that conversation. Yes. He's really work. helped to, because for, to, to get, the, right, and to get, to get this, um, you know, practice, you have to th- kind of think out of the box for some of the other subjects and how sure. can you get this to work. Sure. Um, so this year, new, I'm sure many parents out there have seen their students reading articles on Newzella. So Newzella is a, is a news article. It's a constant, current, everyday articles that teachers can go on there and they can give them an article at their reading level. So, you know, depending on your child's reading level, Newzella will give that so that they're reading a text that doesn't is not frustrating to them and can actually learn the same content and material that um, all the other students are reading. And so they're using that Newzella. A lot of the questions in that do require kind of an ace answer where answering, using support from the article, explaining why for your answer. Um, and so the students are even doing that in art classes. So wow, that's great. That's so important. That continuity, I think, is is really, really important. And I think it shows the students that their skills are transferable, right? I think that's one of the things, I know I think of my own two children, I wrestle with when I ask them a question about something they learned at school, and they're like, I don't know, Dad, that was at school. I'm at home, I don't have to worry about that. And I'm like, well, pause. <laughs> you know, you should be transferring all of this over. So, you know, I know this is a small example, but it's still a good one right. to, to highlight that. I mean, we're just trying to explain when you want to debate a topic with anybody. Yep. If you're giving an answer, you're supporting it. That's and right. And you're explaining, then that's how you win people over to your side. That's right. <laughs> so um, our next topic. Mm. Um, it, the next topic we have is the whole child. Um, so from September 3rd to about October 11th, we had worked on creating a safe and supportive classroom in schools. So teachers were making sure, and they still are, that they're at their door, greeting the students into the classrooms. We're at the administration's outside, greeting the students when they're coming into the school. Um, Students are getting more voice and choice in what some of their assignments are. Um, Students are using some fidgets if they're needed in class. They're just there. If they want it, they can use it. Um, They've created some uh, calm zones where students can go and learn if they're get, if they're frustrated they can just go to this area for a few minutes and so you can see there some of the calm zone areas that are in some of the classrooms um, and so the first one that we then moved on to was courage so we divvied up and divided up the students to small small classes and it was like a little mini assembly and the students were really liking that they yeah. said oh I like that this wasn't a whole assembly in the gym it was just a small group. I had a group of about 14, 15 students in the uh, library, and it was a whole lesson about courage. What does courage mean? How to do, can you show courage? Um, and then we're going to be getting ready to do that for gratitude. And in order to do that, so we have positive office referrals that we call home to parents and say, hey, I, you know, most of them we try to say, we're calling for good news, yeah, not bad news. Yeah, always say that first. <laughs> so as soon as they see the phone number yeah, for the school, yeah. they get panicking. <laughs> um, and then, but we changed those over to be courage. So the things that we were looking for the students, that was what they were being referred to the office instead of what we were mm-hmm. looking for before. So now those are changing over to gratitude. Um, we had PBIS tickets. Um, and we've changed those over to be choose love tickets and showing them so it's all connected yeah and then you know that they were getting those for showing displays of courage and now we're going to move on to hand those out for gratitude and so choose love is a a whole curriculum that's online that we've been doing district-wide and it's courage gratitude forgiveness compassion and action Um, and so that our student council has really helped to put the two together with work that the student council is doing as well as what we're trying to do with the social emotional. So we have a school store and the logo for Choose Love has a little rubber duck. And so this, when the students get PBIS tickets, it's worth 25 cents at the school store. So students are really wanting to buy the different rubber ducks because yeah. they have all different <laughs> outfits yeah. and um, they're just collecting those. Yeah, we're, we're both middle school people and you can't be Luke warm about middle school, right? And so I think it's such a unique 
age and stage of development, um, especially now having two boys that are middle school <laughs> age myself, um, that it, it really is a very unique time in their you know, kind of exploration and their sense of self and the things that they're interested in, the directions they want to move in. Um, so it sounds like <clears throat> the middle school is working really hard to put kind of the systems in place to really help students explore that yeah and I actually I can't remember who was just recently telling me this but like middle school age and the middle school brain it is moving as fast as from like two to five so two to five year olds the growth and development development is just as much during middle school years Um, and I know a lot of parents say to like this isn't who I this isn't who I had last year but you know they learn and they they do turn into great young adults They do. And I think there's, you know, there's two sides of this that we don't talk too much using this language, but there's IQ and there's EQ. And that emotional intelligence, I think, is what I'm really hearing you say that that you you and your team at the middle school are really, you know, in addition to all the academic things that you just outlined, but you're you're really taking this on and making sure. And the ACE helps with this because if the kid can answer and support why they're feeling, why they, they are... Or if they had a conflict with another student, then they're able to use their words better yeah. and get their, you know, emotion, get, make people understand what their emotions are. So, yeah, that's important. Um, so the final piece that we have this evening is um, the community and what, what the middle school has been doing. Um, and a lot of this has been on behalf of the students who have been out in the community and supporting the community. Um, so we have a monthly newsletter. It will go out on February. I'm not February. Sorry. Friday. <laughs> I meant to say Friday. Um, and so this year what we're doing is an audio version. So you no know, people are, you know, there's a lot of information in this newsletter. So the students have helped me to take kind of and made a consent, condensed version. Um, and so you can see there in my office, that's our like this little TV studio we're in today. Mm-hmm. That's our little podcast studio um, where everybody comes together and does pieces and records it. And you do um, this with them? Yep, yep. And they're there That's with awesome. me and they do. Um, I said, oh, let's make it a little really special. So we have a little intro song. I play some music at the beginning. We play some music at the end. That's great. Um, and then they do all the different talking. So that comes out every year. And the students this year, um, my first two years, the teachers would write to me what's happening in the classroom. This year, the students have been writing it. So that what they're reading to you was the pieces that, excuse me, that they have written about what they've learned. And in that's class. monthly? Yep, monthly. every month. Every month I try to send that on the last, the last or the first day of the month. So because of the holidays and when we come back, Friday. I'm going to do it on Friday. That makes sense. Um, the next big thing that we had was we had um, the Monday before um, Thanksgiving, which I believe was November 25th, Mr. Moore, one of our parents who works with Amazon Web Services, um, he did it last year and he really pumped it up this year. So he had some volunteers come last year. This year we were flooded with volunteers. We had 22 Amazon Web Services engineers that came. That's all about coding Um, and the technology behind that. And right now, they told them, you know, this is the coding that we're doing right now, but the the coding language is constantly changing. Mm -hmm. So this is like the one that's in. Um, And so what him and Mrs. Grace really did um, as a STEM tech teacher is they made sure this experience was different for everyone. So if they did the hour code last year, they did the next level of coding this year. And if they were, the sixth graders were new this year, so they did what the kids did last year. Um, and it, then, it was really impressive yeah, having and, been there and watched, you know, and her some of classes these sessions was being amazing. the STEM tech, they learned a lot about this deep lens camera that um, Amazon has and is testing out. And also just how the, the gentleman had gone and, and the career paths that they had taken to get to where they were. Um, and then Mr. Moore surprised everybody with 26 Alexas. Wow. Um, so I thought, you know, the kids could code them. And he's like, no, 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 you can't put them all in one room. <laughs> so I said, oh, okay. Uh, I didn't know that. So I don't, I don't own one, so I don't know. Um, and then four deep lens cameras. But it wasn't just giving those. He actually has one of the person there that's volunteering that's actually going to give the pe- professional development to our teachers and how to use those and use them with the kids. So that that piece was really the best piece. Um, the next one, unless you had no, I was going to say we just were really grateful for that yeah, for that it, whole uh, opportunity and for our kids to be 
able to interact with folks from the industry and have the donations and learn all the coding pieces with that. It's it's really yeah. quite impressive. Um, it, we, I have probably said thank you a, a oh, bazillion times, but it's, it's not enough. <laughs> yeah, they're totally amazing. Um, the next piece was our student council. This year, we have had like almost 100 students, over 100 students doing the student council. So we have to, they have to have separate meetings because all together it's, too it's just too many. Um, and just... I have student counselors doing our morning announcements instead of me um, this year. So one of them is doing the pledge. They, someone else is doing the morning announcements. They helped a huge piece with two of the two things that we've been working on, which was um, creating a safe and supportive school where we did a whole start with hello week um, that we did different things that week. We also had, they're, they're doing the school store, like I said, with the Choose Love and the Rubber Ducks, but they also made the brand, they put a brand new sign over the top of the media center that says Chargers Come Fully Charged. Yes. Um, so a lot of the students um, are helping to do that, um, helping us with our ACE and our instructional focus. Um, and actually the students who helped me with the new, the uh, audio version, I kind of said, okay, you have student council, but do we have like a special unit the mm -hmm. special principals unit of the student council, and those are the students who are helping me with different things. Um, but with student council, we did a pumpkin carving contest. We've had school spirit days. Don't forget to wear your red and green tomorrow. <laughs> Today was holiday socks, but unless people have high waters, we, a lot of people couldn't <laughs> see people's socks. Um, you needed them Saturday. Yeah, yeah. we did um, Thanksgiving baskets for a lot of the our school families that we gave out. Um, we had the school, an all-school dance, so this year we try. Usually, the all-school dance doesn't happen until later in the year, but we did it earlier this year, and everyone. It was sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, and nice. they had a really great time. Um, right now, kids could send candy grams to teachers or other students, and so they'll be delivered on Friday as a little special surprise before the break. Um, and then we can't wait for the great gift giveaway. Hopefully, the weather holds <laughs> on Thursday. Um, and so hopefully if you haven't seen that, you can go on our Facebook page back to about this time last year and you would see the video that um, we have done for that. It's kind of like, um, I can't think of that. I, I'm, not, I'm not old enough for the game show, but the one where people would come down <laughs> and you, you have three me? doors. <laughs> so you have, you have three it's doors and you're like, do you want what's behind door two or do you want what's this? And so they can pick. The price was, and people all dressed up in right. the uh, audience. Yeah. No, because people dressed up in the audience. It's from like the 60s, I think. I don't even know. That's hilarious. Um, As somebody watching this, can you please type in the name of the game show? <laughs> I can't think of it right I thought now. it was the price is right, but no, you're no, right. It's, it's not that. No, and this I know is the, the one where they dressed about. up in the audience. Got it. So that will be during our holiday tacky sweater day. So the, hopefully all the kids are dressed up for that. Um, and if you are listening to sixth grade, you'll near, need um, things for your ears. It's really very loud because right? yeah. they have never experienced it before. Yeah. Um, and then the National Junior Honor Society is our eighth grade students, and they have they do a lot of community service with that. And so at Halloween time, we had pounds of Halloween candy actually given back. The kids chose not to back. eat. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so we did the buyback and had that candy sent for our troops. But they also helped at the B Post PJs with Santa. Nice. Um, they helped down there. They helped the Blackstone Harvest Festival, the Blackstone Hometown Celebration. They did a local park cleanup. Um, they helped tutor after school for any students who need that. Um, they helped the boy, the local Boy Scouts with scouting for food and collecting that. Um, right now, we're collecting socks for Socks with Angels, and they're going to donate the socks to the local um, homeless shelter. And then when we come back in January, we're going to be collecting canned good and non-perishables for Hunger Games. Um, and then that will be donated to the local pantries. That's great. So we got an answer. Karen, Tom, and Julia, thank you. It's <laughs> let's make a deal. Yes, that's it. <laughs> that's great. You can clearly see that we'll be off to some big broadcasting now. Yeah. Production after this edition. <laughs> Um, and the last thing is just really the connection that the PTO has to the school and help support our schools. Um, we had a color run at the beginning of the year that the kids absolutely loved. And the I think the parents liked it more because they got to throw powdered color yeah. at, the, at the kids. Um, they help run all our sixth grade socials. So it's a time for just the sixth graders to get to really know each other. Um, they do help fund all our after school programs. And the biggest hit so far has been the yoga club after school. 
Um, but we are signing up for winter clubs right now. So if you haven't had your child sign up, there are five clubs that you can sign up for. And there is a ski club after, after break that's going on Sundays. And that actually has high school students that go as well. That's great. Uh, so Mr. Dudek is writing in. No. He's trying, Thanks, I think he's, Mr. I think, Dudek. I think he's trying to tease us. Do we have a host for the game show? Huh? Yeah, that's <laughs> me and my Grinch hat. You <laughs> if you want to see, the, you can see last year's. I'm the host then, too. I think that's the present the, the giveaway. Yeah. yeah, and then they never want to pick in my pocket. Like, I'm like, what? You want what's in my pocket? And they're like, no. I don't remember, I don't remember you writing in any questions when Mr. Dudek was <laughs> yeah, out here. I, I All right, was we're going to remember this, Mike. We're going to remember this. <laughs> So you certainly can go back, though. I do host it, it, which is why I said you need, like, when you're on that stage and everybody's screaming and, and they're trying to also tell people, because some, there's some tricks we do, so the audience is trying to tell the person choosing what they should pick. Um, so it's, it's a lot of fun. That's great. It sounds like there is <laughs> so much incredible work going on at the middle school. And so, you know, I have a, I have a really hard question for you. So you're in your third year, right, as principal. Um, you have done just a phenomenal job of getting the school refocused and re-energized uh, around teaching and learning and really looking at, you said, kind of the whole needs and really continuing some of the good work around giving back to the community and keeping the kids engaged in that work. But, you know, in your past two and a half, you know, going on three years, what's been your favorite part? What's been your most favorite part about being principal of, of our middle school? Because that's a huge job. There's yeah. a lot of work to do. I mean, there's a lot of a lot of work um, with the principal, but the kids have just, it's something I never experienced in 17 years before coming to Blackstone Millville, um, where the kids love coming to school every day. Um, they're trying their hardest. They, you know, say, okay, I'm going to try differently this way if I need to. Um, and they just really are a community. So that's yeah. really what's the best piece. I would agree. We have the most brilliant and excited and energetic students I've ever seen. And, and truly, I mean, the, the pride the kids have in their schools and their towns, it's remarkable, admirable for sure. Does anybody have any questions before we wrap up? I just want to be really mindful of time. We're a little bit over the half hour mark. Um, but we just want to check in and see if anybody has any questions. And so while folks are putting any last minute questions together, I want to thank Ms. Kurt for your time. You're welcome. Um, but I also, more importantly, want to thank you for all your work and all the dedication that you've put into moving um, our middle school. I was a middle school principal for almost 10 years. I know how hard that job is. I know how unique that population is. Um, and I know that, you know, this position is not just for anybody and everybody. Uh, and you do it very well. So we're really appreciative of your time, thank effort, you. and energy with that. Yeah, in middle school, you have to have fun and laugh. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm in year 21 and being in middle school, not counting my, I would be to have middle school. We had junior high. Sure. Yeah. So, yeah. um, I could actually even add student teaching cause I student taught in seventh grade. So I've been in seventh grade a long time. Yeah. <laughs> you never moved on. <laughs> um, and so, uh, speaking of moving on, moving forward here, um, our next, um, Facebook live stream will be January 27th. Uh, it sounds like a long ways from now, but we're going to blink and it's going to be here. Uh, and we are going to be introducing to the community uh, the new principal, not so new anymore, but of the um, JFK AFM complex, Dr. Chan Remka. Jenny Remka will be here and talking a bit about the work going on at the complex that is helping to feed our middle school. And then in February, we're going to hear from Principal Schaefer, Christina Schaefer at Millville Elementary. So it'll give our families a really good sense of our full kind of comprehensive K-12 uh, perspective. Um, and so please do join us for that at 6 p.m. on January 27th. I'll send out uh, multiple reminders as always before that. Um, but do want to uh, just take a moment and thank everybody for their support. I think we've had a really great 2019. Um, this is always an interesting time of year for me because it's one of uh, reflection and um, you know celebration of all the work that's been done. <clears throat> I think. There's a quote that's posted up on the wall in my gym that I was talking to the leadership team about that I really love. And it's basically uh, framed around, you know, celebrating successes, but never be satisfied with the progress. Always keep pushing forward. So that's what you can absolutely expect from us uh, in 2020 and in many years to come. And so uh, with that, we'll wrap up. I want to wish everybody a happy holiday season, a safe holiday season, and we will see you all very soon.
Thanks so much. If you have any other questions, please uh, send them in and we'll get them, we'll get some answers back to you. Take care.